Yo, Scooch on today's video, I got the how to make a passive ability slash skill video and stuff. Um, people who've played Battlegrounds game, but I'm pretty sure anyone who's played combat games, you guys know what passive abilities, if you don't know what those are. That's like, it's not like something where like you press E or 1 and then, you know, you use a skill it's more so while you're doing something it's happening in the background it's passive like it's just casually happening in the background and stuff so i did some reading on like some uh passive uh thing some passive uh, abilities for the characters in the strongest battleground just to get a better sense of how it really works and stuff i knew what it was but i didn't really know how to really apply it in a game so i just did some reading to see like how other games have applied it so i'm going to show you guys a little example like about like two examples and stuff so you guys can build off of this but yeah let's go ahead and get straight into the video okay so let me go ahead and let's create a remote event inside of replicated storage click, click the plus icon rename this remote event to combat event then we're going to open up starter player insert a local script rename that local script to combat script in parentheses put local right um so we're going to need to create a basic m1 system it's very basic and stuff i'm not even going to uh what's it called i'm not even going to have sound effects and stuff this is just simply so that we need combat to really test it and stuff so we're really going to spend like probably a minute here we're going to create two variables first let's get the user input service so local uis is equal to game get service user input service then create a variable for the combat remote event so local combat event is equal to game or replicated storage wait for child combat event then let's set up the function uis that input began connect function in parentheses put input comma process Enter you're then going to say if input dot user input type is equal to enum dot user input type dot mouse button one because we're setting up m1s and not process which just means the player is not typing in chat enter you're then going to fire their mode event so combat event fire server in quotation marks we're going to send over the m1 m1 events and stuff right or that'll be the name of the event i should say then head on over to server script service click the plus icon insert a server script you're going to rename that script to combat script and parentheses put server you guys yeah have animations over here and stuff so i'm gonna just drag these over and stuff right this is just to help the demonstration so to enter an animation you would just click the plus icon. i don't know why my plus icon disappeared here but you guys know it would be like right here so you would just yeah so you would just you know insert the animation throw your animation in there name them accordingly um i recommend naming them the exact same way i have it um unless you know how to name and reference properly um and yeah but you guys don't have to use animations if you don't want to and stuff and then yeah you can't use my animation ids you guys have to find your own you can go to the uh, toolbox to find them and yeah so let's create let's go ahead and create a variable for the combat remote event so local combat event same thing we do on the local script is equal to game that replicated storage away for child combat event right then i'm going to set up the function to create a few things so first we're going to say game that players that player added connect function in parentheses you're going to put plr we'll just show for the player enter we're going to create something called current character now for people who've watched my battleground series you'll know what this is current character pretty much it just tell it just tells you what character the player has equipped now i'm assuming you guys are making this for like a battlegrounds game or something right or players equip certain characters and stuff right because you know each character has their own different uh passive and stuff so that's how we're going to tell whether or not we're going to apply the effects based on what character the the player has equipped so we're going to say local current character right is equal to instance dot new it's going to be a string value and parent this to the player then you're going to set that you're going to set the name same thing is equal to current character enter then current character dot value by default you would set this to whatever you know your characters just for the demonstration i'm just going to say character one right so uh then i'm going to set up the character added function so player dot character added connect to function in parentheses put character enter we then have to create a combat status system i have videos that focus on i have videos that focus on hitboxes m1 systems and uh a, uh what was i talking about oh i forgot a uh, combat status system stuff so if you guys want to see more in-depth like actually explaining how it works go watch those videos because i'm really focusing just on the passive side of things so let's create the combat status system. combat status system so combat status is equal to instance dot new you said this would be another string value parent this one to the character and then you're going to say combat status dot name is equal to combat status enter then combat status dot value is equal to nothing oh, 
which is blank. And then we're going to create the attack number. So you can just copy and paste all this. I should probably do this for the first one. Actually, or the second one. Control C, Control V. Rename this to attack number. This is for the M1s. Now, M1s usually go one, two, three, but for this, I'm just going to go one, two, one, two. So left punch, right punch, and then keep going back and forth. So for this, this will be a number value. You're going to parent this to the character as well. So Control C, Control V, Control V, Control V, and then the value by default will be set to one. And then we're going to go ahead and create a hitbox right here for the combat portion. So I'm going to say local hitbox is equal to instance dot new in quotation marks. We're going to put a part. Parent this to the character's humanoid root part, right? Then we're going to set some properties. So hitbox dot name is equal to hitbox, right? Then hitbox dot massless is equal to true. Hitbox dot anchored is equal to false. Hitbox dot can collide is equal to false. Hitbox that transparency is equal to one unless you're testing. Hitbox that size is equal to vector three dot new. You're gonna say five comma six comma two point five. You can adjust that size as needed. Then hitbox that color. This is for testing is equal to color three dot new. Uh, parentheses one comma zero comma zero. So red. And then we're gonna set it C frame. So hitbox pivot two. You're gonna say character dot humanoid root part dot c frame and then lastly you're going to weld the hitbox to the character's humanoid root part so let's say local weld constraint is equal to instance dot new notation marks you're going to put weld constraint parent this to the hitbox you're going to say weld constraint dot part zero is equal to hitbox and then weld constraint part one is equal to character dot humanoid root part and then we're done with that function. Now we can move on to the actual uh, combat portion. So we're going to go down here. We're going to say combat event dot on server event connect function. In parentheses, put PLR register for the player, comma event type. And then I don't believe we need. Yeah, we don't need our one here. So event type then press enter. Right. You're going to create a variable for the player's character. So local character is equal to player dot character. Then you're going to set up an if statement. You're going to say if event type is equal to equation marks m1 and character dot combat status dot value is equal to nothing so that they're able to attack right and then enter so then you're going to set the uh character's combat status to attacking so character dot combat status dot value is equal to uh, attacking right and then you're going to set up the animation track for them to throw the punch so local at short for animation track is equal to character that humanoid that animator load animation in parentheses you're going to get your uh animation this is why i said it's important to name it the exact way i did because here's what i'm going to do right i'm going to say script regular i'm going to say script uh regular bracket notation marks i'm going to put m1 left parenthesis then that that to string i'm going to convert the character's attack number right then that value convert that to a string then dot 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 um wait yeah dot dot quotation mark right parenthesis and then we're done with that then we're going to play the animation track so at play and then after that um, i'm going to um set the attack number i'm going to increase it or decrease it so your character dot attack number that value is less than two, then character dot attack number is plus equal one. Else if character dot attack number dot value is equal to two, then we'll say character dot attack number is set back to one. So we'll just be uh, resetting it, right? Now let me scroll down a little. So then after that, we're going to set up the ray casting so that we can detect if like, you know, there's the players within range of the hitbox. So I'm going to first set up the start position. So local start position is equal to character dot humanoid root part dot hitbox dot position. Then we're going to create the direction. So local direction is equal to, oh, my bad, is equal to character dot humanoid root part that hitbox that c frame dot look vector if i knew how to spell look vector then i'm um, setting up the raycast parameter so local raycast params is equal to raycast params dot new close parentheses then we're going to set the uh properties of raycast params that filter type is equal to enum dot raycast filter type that exclude then raycast params dot filter descendants 
instances is equal to character get to descendants, right? Then I'm going to create the ray. So local ray is equal to workspace ray cast the start position, comma direction. Oh, sorry. Okay, I remember this time. Direction times uh you can do three or five, so I'm gonna just do five. Then throw your ray cast params in there. So once we're done with that, um we're gonna set up an if statement. So for this, we're gonna say if ray and ray that instance. So if the ray was you know successfully created and I made contact with an instance and that instance's name was or right that instance dot name was equal to hitbox, which we do you know we fit either an NPC or a player. If that's the case, then we'll label the enemy character. So local enemy character is equal to ray dot instance dot parent dot parent, right? So two parents. Then we're gonna say if ray we're gonna say if ray that instance oh wait I just realized it's actually not needed so we're gonna say if enemy character instead so let's say if enemy character dot combat status dot value is equal to nothing right which means they're just they're defenseless pretty much then we'll just proceed then we'll just proceed from uh from here and stuff so we're gonna set their value so we're gonna say enemy character dot um, best status we're gonna set it so comma status that value is equal to attacks because they're you know they're being punched right now all right and then i'm gonna throw another if statement so i'm gonna say if player that current character that value is equal to character one so here's where the examples come into play right so let's say that character one's um let's say that character one's passive is that they do twice as much damage as everyone else let's say every other everyone else when they use m1s they um only do five they only do uh they only damage someone they only take away five health right but let's say their passive is that they do double double the m1 damage so instead they do 10 damage so that's what we're going to do we're going to say enemy character dot humanoid dot health is less than equal to 10 instead of five but then we're going to throw but then we're going to uh, throw in else here. Pretty much means if they don't have character one, if they're if they're using any other character, then we're just going to make it so that the enemy character's uh, health is only reduced by the regular default of five, right? So that's just that's one example, and then I'm sure you'll, uh, another one, right? And then we're going to set their enemy character's combat status back to normal once all of this is done. So status the value is equal to nothing. And then um, I'm going to throw an else if here. So for this if statement, I'm going to throw an else. So I'm going to say else if, right? So this right here, all this is assuming that the enemy character is just doing nothing. They're defenseless. Now, let's say they were blocking and they had a certain character equipped. So here's what I'm going to do, right? I'm going to say else if enemy character dot combat status the value is equal to block. So let's say they're blocking, right? And then let's say character two's passive is that while they're blocking, if they're hit while they're blocking, the other person will actually take the damage instead of them. Like the attacking player will take the damage instead of them. So it's their passive instead of just another example of that. So let's say they're blocking. We're going to use an if statement. We're going to say if enemy character. We're going to say if enemy character dot combat. Wait, I already did this. If an, oh, wait, wait, wrong thing. Sorry. We need to find the, uh, oh, yeah, 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 the player, the player. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say game dot players. We need to find them. Again, let's find first child. Enemy character dot name. Then go on the outside. You're going to say dot current character dot value. So, so pretty much if the character they're using is, let's say, character two, right? Character two. What will happen is, what will happen is, right? um what we're going to do is we're going to reverse it and the character is going to be the one to actually take damage instead because then that's their passive while they're blocking they're able to like kind of uh reflect the damage back onto the other player rather than them rather than rather than the attacking player getting hurt then we're gonna we're just gonna skip three ends test that weight throw a low cooldown so 0 0.5 seconds and then say character dot combat status that value is set back to normal and then okay let's go ahead and test to make sure this works as always, if you guys want access to any one of my scripts or models, you guys can become either a channel member or a Discord subscriber. Highly recommend either one of those. Uh, either one of those options can be purchased in my description in the description. Stuff. Highly recommend that and stuff. Um, shout out to all my Discord subscribers and YouTube members. I appreciate all of y'all. So we gotta test the two outcomes because the first one is supposed to be, uh, since I'm using character, since I'm using character one, um, by default, I should do more damage. Okay. So the M ones clearly. Okay, and the M ones broke already. Wow, that is crazy. Barely took any time. Oh, there's an error. 
Attempt to perform a rhythmic add on character. Oh my bad guys. Okay, I made I made a mistake. Okay. Let's go back here. I forgot the statement right here. Okay, so I forgot that value. My bad. So that value that value. So that's my bad. Let's go ahead and make sure just you know we publish our work. And then let's go ahead and test to make sure. And then okay, I'm good. So from here, right? Let's go ahead and set up a test server. Here's honestly in my opinion the best way to test. I feel like it's better just set up a test server rather than like um rather than like insert NPCs and stuff. I just feel like this is just this is safety more time in my opinion. But we'll see. So okay, we're loading in. Okay. So now let's see. Okay, so the M1 system is working. Perfect. Okay. So by default, my this is player one. By default, current character is one. So I should do I should do uh, or I should deal ten damage per hit. So if we go to player two, we go to the humanoid, right, and then we scroll down to their health, right. If I punch them once, you guys see I just did ten damage, right. So now if I switch to the server and then I change player one's current character, let's say player one's current character is now character two, right. Their passive has changed. Now they have a passive that helps them defensively rather than an offensive passive. Uh, passive. So if I go back to character or yeah, player one, and then I, if I try to hit them this time, now they only now uh, they're only they only t took five damage and stuff, right? They were only damn. I don't know how to. Say, I don't really don't know how to talk. I don't know how to say this. Um, they were only damaged by. They only lost five five. Other, bro, I really don't know how, how to say that. But anyway, so yeah, they only they only took damage they took less damage we're just gonna say it like that they took less damage right now if we were to test the combat status portion right so since i have character two right um for player one so right now player one uh, te technically has character two equipped right if i set my combat status to block so so obviously i'm not blocking but just imagine that player one is blocking right just imagine that player one is blocking right this player one right yeah just imagine player one is blocking and then player two tries to attack Here's what's gonna happen. The damage is then reversed on me because that's his passive, right? So the so this is just some examples. You guys can really do a lot with this and decide how you want to go about it. But that's just an example of how you would go about making a passive and stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I definitely hope it was helpful. If you're new, definitely uh subscribe if you enjoy, leave a like and stuff. Um and yeah, thank you guys so much for all the love and support you guys have been showing on my channel. I really do appreciate it. Let's go ahead. We're already on the way to twelve thousand. Let's go ahead and get up there. Thank you so much. Hope everybody's having a great summer, and I'll see you guys in the next video.